So welcome back, guys. This is Mahadev Pivel, and today we are going to discuss about buffer catch. So, what is buffer catch? So, when user gives a command from a main memory disk controller, will search for a specific block which is required for the user in the secondary memory. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. So just leave this aside. So, what is catch? Catch is a type of memory where uh, the addresses of the data which is going to be stored in this uh secondary memory will uh, be contained in this cache memory so cache memory is very fast when compared to all the remaining memories so when user gives a command the from this main memory the disk controller so this is a main word so disk controller will search for a specific block which is required for the user in the secondary memory uh okay so what is block so let us just get into this diagram so here we can just see that right so above the cpu let us just consider an user so the user will just pass some command to the cpu or we can just say the user clicks on an application and then the cpu will just get some commands like we need to just get some registers and we need to just get some signals so we need to just get some information regarding this uh, c uh, so to run this application so basically the cpu will just get into this main memory so after get into main memory so cpu will just think like so where we need to where we should search for those things so basically uh, the things will be stored in the secondary memory so let us just checking the secondary memory but wait how to this check the how to just check the data in the secondary memory the main memory gets a doubt so basically the 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 data which is stored in the secondary memory will be searched with the help of this disk controller so disk controller will just search the data which is in the secondary memory so what is the data in the secondary memory so the data in the secondary memory is called as a disk blocks so disk blocks is nothing but the data in the secondary memory will be stored as a parts so those parts will be stored as a queue so this queue will follow all the search techniques of the queues we can just follow all the search technique of the queues to just get the data or the registers or the files which are required for uh, running of our application so this disk controller will search for those secondary memory in an order so it is not much efficient right so every time if the user gives a command to search for this thing then the disk controller searching for those thing the whole queue every time so this is not much efficient right so the main thing of the human is to just make his work easy like he need to just make his work more efficient so in this process the person uh, who is just uh, learning how to just deploy an operating system he has just got an idea of buffer catch so what is buffer catch so buffer catch is nothing but it will just hold down some of the addresses of the files which were in the secondary memory wait wait uh, okay so let us just be clear so in the buffer catch there will be some of the files some of the disk blocks in the secondary memory so why only some why can't we just hold down all this in buffer catch so what are those some you may just get some doubts like this so basically these disk blocks so let us just consider this whole thing as a library so library we know library right in our college so all the students have a same library not only one student having a different library and another one having this a different one so those all things are not there in the library so library is a common source for all the students to just gain some knowledge uh, regarding their subjects right so basically this cpu is uh, the reception so let us just consider sorry not the cpu the cpu is not the register your cpu is the user like the cpu is the student so the student need to get some book right so to get some book he need he will just get into this main memory like he will just get inside the library and then he will just get to the reception and he will just ask the librarian about the book regarding this operating system designs so he may just ask about this linux operating system also so whatever it may be he will just ask uh, by topic or he will just say the book name so the librarian will think and he will just get into his laptop and he will just get the list of the whole books which were in this library so here the secondary memory is known as the library so these whole blocks are known as books 
So basically, after opening the laptop, he will just get all these blocks, right? So in these blocks, he will have information like the topic names, the book names. So after, as I said before, the student had just said this name of the book, then he will just check for those books or the topics in his laptop and he will just get the direction to just get that book in this library. Like he will just say in second floor uh, to the right side corner in the third block, he will just get the book in this fourth uh, array, so whatever it may be. So he will just tell something to the person who just came to the librarian to ask, uh, I need to just get some info. So he will just ask like that and the, the librarian will just tell something. So then the disk controller will just do the work which is done by the searching in the laptop. So the librarian is searching for the book topic in a laptop. So the whole searching will be done with the help of this disk controller. So let us just leave those library example uh, for a side and then let us just get into this main topic. So the commands from the CPU will just get into this main memory and from main memory, the disk controller will search for the file which is required for the user. But if one person came and asked for the Linux operating system and then the second person also went and asked for Linux uh, operating system book and then third person also asked for the Linux operating system book. So here three persons are asking for same book but in different timings. So basically, if three persons are asking uh, for the same book in different timings, then the librarian uh, will not get angry. So he will just remember the thing. As I said before, we will just remember the things which were done today. So at least we will remember the things which were done a half an hour before. So the librarian will just remember the place where he will just get that book. And he will just tell that place for these whole three people again and again. So the the remembering of that address uh, for not repeating for so many times. So searching, uh, we can just say like, why can't, why uh, why is this buffer catch? Every time disk controller can search for the book for every new fresh thing. So that is also a case. So let us just consider one thing. It is consuming a lot of time, right? So performing a queue search operation is a very big task. So if you just remember this buffer catch thing, then it will just remember some of the addresses of the most famous topics or books which were asked by so many people. So if continuously many users are asking regarding this one of its disk block that is sample. So many users are asking about this sample, then the samples address will be stored in the buffer catch. So there is no need of this disk controller only in the case of that. So that is the help of this buffer catch to just store the address of the most repeating disk blocks in a secondary memory. I think this is fine. So buffer catch copies the command. If the command by the user is found in the buffer catch, then it can directly access the secondary memory. As it knows the address of the block which is required for the user, then it will just directly get into the secondary memory and it will just return back the files. So whenever the command is passed, it will be uh, passed only from this buffer catch. So whenever this command is passed, it can be only passed through this buffer catch, not directly from this main memory. So this is the help of this buffer catch to just uh, bring some efficiency. So what is buffer header? So buffer header is nothing but so basically for a person, there will be some minimum requirements like name, class, section. So with these three, with these three things, we can just find a student in our college. So that is easy, right? So here in this uh, set of blocks, so in this set of disk blocks, there will be three categories like device number, block number, status. So these three things will just define a block and uh, it will just get into this data area and previous buffer and it will just get into this hash queue and this free list and these all things we can just keep it aside i will just explain it now so these three things are required for uh, remembering like uh, for this device controller to just search for the block in this whole thing so what will be the status of the buffer so the status of the buffer is nothing but Locked state, valid state, delayed write state, reading or writing state, waiting for free state. So locked state is nothing but uh, it is just invalid thing. So we will not touch that again. So that is a locked state. 
and then while coming to valid state it is it had just completed all its uh, functions or it has it has already completed all its test cases and it has passed it in all these things and it is the required file for the user then that status is known as a valid state and then delayed write is nothing but we had just discussed the concept of the interrupts right so if a process is interrupted in mid middle then the main process which is working working on that operating system will just uh, give a delay for some time so delayed write is nothing but once if the interrupted process is completed then this delayed write will work as usual so this is delayed write is nothing but just waiting for some wait, waiting for some time in the middle of some interrupting process and reading or writing is nothing but reading or writing some files or the data into this operating system and waiting for free is nothing but it is just waiting for some permissions or it is just waiting for its turn so this is about this status of a buffer whenever the kernel is free he will write the contents into the disk copy so kernel will have so many processes so when he is free then he will just write the contents into this disk copy so this is about uh, the buffer headers and then let us just get into this structure of a buffer pool as i said before buffer pool is a combination of all these files so it will be in a form of a queue so that is uh, while buffer is in ready state to read the blocks then those numbers should be present in the hash queue then they will be in a tree free list after system boots so what is this thing so second secondary memory consists of all these things as i had said before so the secondary memory consists of all the files uh, which are required for the pro processing of our application and then as i said before some of the files will uh, which are mostly repeated as i had said before in this library example the files which were repeated most of the times will just get into this hash queue so from this hash queue they will be in the form of a free list so free list is an another thing so free list is nothing but the things uh, will be in a particular order so the things which were mostly used recently they will be towards the head and then the things which were used to the least times will be towards its uh, tail so let us just get into t so what is this head what is this tail so free list is just for the purpose of uh, recognizing these most famous uh, catchy buffer uh, blocks so whenever user passes a command then the kernel with a disk controller searches for block first in this buffer cache if it is found then it will be redirected to the process so if the command which is passed by the user if those applications is found in this cache then it will just return back to this operating system so it will just directly address the secondary memory for those files and it will just complete the execution of that file so the free list is just nothing but uh it is just these uh, uh, placing the order of this hash queue files uh and then uh, if it is found then it will be redirected to this application uh, operating system and the process gets completed so this is about a uh, free list so the most used will be towards the first position and the last used will be towards the last position so why is it last so let us just discuss most used will be towards the top least used will be at the starting so when user tries to approach a block which is not present in this tree list like if he just try to approach the block which is not present in this buffer cache then the least used block will be attached to the process then the number will be replaced by the number which it was searching so what is this so if the person is searching for if the user is searching for a block which is not in this uh, hash queue so the number is not in this hash queue then the what this will do so this is a big question so if it is present in the secondary memory but not present in this free list so basically what it will do is it will just bring this least used uh, least used block and it will just attach to the process and then the process will just give an interrupt like this is not the file which i was just requesting for then with that interrupt so the interrupt has a more value in uh, in any operating system right so the example for interrupt is our task manager so if we just click on this control or delete then our task manager will work within uh, some seconds right so that is an interrupt so this is not my file please change it the processor will just give an interrupt 
So after giving the interrupt, so the uh, disk controller will again just get back to this secondary memory and performs all the queue searching operations and it will just find the block which is required for the user and it will just replace with this least user block. So this is about a free list. So the, the least blocker, the least user one will be removed and it will be replaced with the help of this most user one and the most user one will again get back to the top position. So the invalid buffers are also placed at the head to just give a note like this is not working, please do not use. So this is just like a notice port. So to cover this last point, like invalid buffers are placed at the head. So this hash queue concept is uh, evolved. So how this hash queue, so how these elements are arranged in this hash queue. So this LA, the, the number of block in this secondary memory are arranged in hash queue with the help of this percentage function. That is just this uh, reminder. So the block number mod four will just decide this place where the data should be stored. So these data mod, uh, divided by four will just give some reminder, right? So in that indexes, this data will be stored. Why four? This is because let us just consider one thing. So basically, if we just see the controls or the operations which were going on inside this uh, system will not be appeared to the user, right? So those systems will not be appeared to the user. So to overcome that, uh, they, uh, they will just uh, give some example to the students to just understand. So this is just an application of that arrangement of things. So for this application, I was just considering this four, but not at all for any, uh, this not only four, we can just consider any number for arranging this in this uh, pool. So zero mod four, one mod four, two mod four, three mod four. This is nothing but 28 divided by four is reminder zero, four divided by four zero, 64 divided by four zero. So according to the reminders, uh, this indexes, these numbers will be placed in the pool. So that's, this is just a small concept uh, how to just uh, arrange the things in this queue. And then retrieval of a buffer. So kernel finds the block on its hash queue and it, and it buffer is free. The kernel can't find the block, it allocates a buffer from the tree list. The kernel can't find the block on the queue and the free list of buffer is empty. So these are some of the cases in which the uh, buffer can be retrieved. So this is about the memory allocation and the buffer. So thank you for watching guys.